How you doing, everybody? Arcader Zero here. We're going to talk about one of my favorite genres of role-playing games, superhero role-playing games, because I just got a new one. So a little bit of background of me and superhero role-playing games is I started playing Villains and Vigilantes back in the 80s, and that was the shit, man. That was the top-notch role-playing game back then. Still is today. I mean, I love it, but that's mainly from a nostalgia point of view, but there's something about their character creation always works it was a random generation the table was perfect my friends and i would sit there hours hours days upon days just rolling up character after character and making sense of the powers how it all fits into the character which was really cool um so huge fan of vnv that that's uh that's our bible that's our uh, our big love still is to this day and since then there's been a lot of role-playing games coming out also back in the day i played some champions um which was was good but it was so crunchy and it, it it took a little bit of the uh the mystique or flavor out of superhero role-playing games because i've got an attack it does this 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 i mean you're really assembling everything from scratch some people like that which is fine but to me it just kind of took away from the flavor of superhero role-playing games it became like a, an accountant's version of role-playing games, if that makes sense. Then I played DC Heroes. I forgot to bring it up here. DC Heroes. Oh, I was, we were big on DC Heroes, too. But that involved a lot of math. There was a lot of balance issues. The gadgetry rules were just kind of kind of wonky. Um, uh, but we enjoyed it. We, you know, we had a good time playing with it back in the 80s. So let's take a look at some of the uh, superior role-playing games I do have. I do have DC Heroes. It's back there. I'm going to show it to you right now. But of course, the first one, the Villains Vigilantes. Absolutely love it. This is one of the box sets. This is not my original box set. That got destroyed because it got used so much. I had up buying a, another one. I think I'm on version number three right now. Of course, uh, Jeff D. came out with Living Legends, another superhero role-playing game. Um... The Authority, that's the uh, Tristat uh, Big Eyes Small, uh, small Mouth uh, uh, rule set. Really cool. Uh, enjoyed this too. I made some pretty funky characters with this one. Um, let's see what else we got here. Mighty Protectors, uh, the new VMV 3.0. I'll be honest, I've never played it, but I have it. I love it. Um, they've introduced some things about uh, point buying and everything else. So. Kind of marrying some modern concepts in here. Still, uh, still a great book. V and V, love it. Um, a Baron, uh, White Wolf system, superheroes. I enjoyed the White Wolf system for vampire. This actually worked really well. Very realistic, and the setting was great. My friends and I played a huge campaign on this. I think two campaigns, uh, which worked out pretty well. So that's really good. Let's see, Amp, Amp Year One. Funky rules and kind of guided power creation because it's set. Uh, the powers are set for this setting, specific setting. Like you can be like one of these type of uh, superheroes. Uh, very interesting. It went for really realistic inside the rules and the, the background, like a, a real like real world like a Baron did. But it looks very anime. All the drawings are anime. I like the artwork, but it just doesn't really match the uh, what's inside. A little bit of a disconnect there. Uh, Mutants and Masterminds. Here's one of my Mutants and Masterminds. Of course, they got a newer version of this out, but this one I liked better. Um, it had more flavor to the powers when they moved up to the new one. It, it borrowed a lot more from Champions. Uh, this was originally based off uh, the D20 stuff like Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, the guy who wrote it is an absolute freaking genius when it comes to superhero role-playing games. Um, but I made a ton of heroes in this. I converted a lot of heroes um, a lot of math involved in this, not as much as champions, but there's some math involved in this one. Um, but still very enjoyable and awesome artwork throughout and great, um, great layouts and everything else. It's, uh, it's a good superhero book. Um, Icons, another personal favorite, Icons. Uh, same guy who made Mutants and Masterminds. This is like the light version. Easy, so easy to pick up, make characters, sit down and enjoy a session. You can make anything you can think of. In fact, I wrote a source book with all 80s heroes like Knight Rider, uh, Manimal, um, all these different characters all wrote, written up for icons. Very cool. The artwork is very distinctive, very stylish, um, very like Bruce Timm-like, uh, the guy who did uh, Batman. Um, pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Fate. 
Fate Core. They they do superheroes. It's a little superhero book. Venture City. Uh, great background book. Um, excellent. I think you can apply it to almost any superhero role playing game. But um, very cool. Worth checking out. Um, anybody remember this one? Okay, this is with the cards. The Saga system. Doing Marvel. This actually worked really, really well. I actually really loved it. This is very cool. Uh, speaking of Marvel, here is yet another Marvel book. This is uh, Cortex. Um, this is fantastic. I freaking love Cortex Prime. It's my favorite role-playing system, in case you haven't seen any of my videos before. But Civil War, um, really good. What else can I say? Uh, Cortex Prime is up there, like top-tier role-playing game systems. Speaking of Cortex Prime, of course we have Smallville. Very interesting take on uh, on the superhero genre. The, the person who put this together and wrote this knew how stories are crafted and motivations and everything else. And you work off more motivations than your statistics like might or uh, brawn or strength or agility or anything like that. Um, which is extremely interesting, different, and it worked very, very well. I love it. And plus, I was a fan of Smallville, so I ended up liking this. Of course, uh, there are other uh, universal systems out there, Cypher, that you can do superheroes, but Cortex, Cortex Prime is my favorite. But today, we are not talking about any of these. I'm going to be talking about this one I got in today, Prowlers and Paragons. All right, first of all, check out the, the art, the cover. Isn't that awesome? You know, it extends all the way around. I got I, I sprung for the uh, the premium book, which I'm glad I did because um, it's it's really good, great quality. Thought it'd be a little bit better quality with the pages, like glossy pages, like Mutants and Masterminds, but it's not. But it's still fine because it's still awesome. Um, you know, because it's all full color inside. Yeah. So Prowlers and Paragons is very very interesting. Um, I was hesitant, but I kept seeing people posting about this. Oh, when is this coming out? When is and I'm like, I have no idea what this book's about or the system or anything about it. All I knew it was a superhero role-playing game, so it kind of got a little uh, bonus there. But I um, knew nothing about it. So uh, I finally said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead, spring for it, see what it's all about. I sprung for the, uh, for the top tier, which I'm glad because I absolutely love it. Um, it's a really, really good role-playing system. Um, after going through the rules, I haven't actually played it yet because I got it today. But uh, next time I run a Supers campaign, it's going to be in this. Um, a little bit about this. This fits somewhere like below as far as rules wise, not, you know, comparison. But it's somewhere between Cortex, very cinematic system, and Mutants and Masterminds. It's in between there as far as complexity versus cinematic. I like cinematic uh, role playing. Um, I like when you can explain what your characters are doing and flourish and uh, everything has kind of a, uh, uh, a very feel to whatever genre you're going for, which Cortex Prime does better than anybody else. Uh, Mutants and Masterminds has some crunch. So this has a little bit of crunch and a mixture of cinematic and it blended just perfectly like a right balance if you're looking for that balance this has it um inside of course you got tons there's the uh there's a picture i really liked hold on it's coming up here i know i know it's i know it's close to the beginning of this chapter yeah I like that. I know it's kind of like an Iron Man buff, but I still think it looks freaking cool. That is a great picture. But it, it's chock full of great art. And even the uh, characters in the back, um, they all have like different styles. I could tell like some was more 90s, you know, lots of uh, pouches and stuff like that. And others were kind of like 80s and, you know, going through the uh, uh, going through the years. But all great write-ups. Um, interesting system. Uh, let's talk about the system itself is uh it only uses d6s okay which is kind of a little bit of a turn off for me but it works for them um i ended up being turned off uh initially turned off by like uh fake core because it only used d6s but then i ended up loving it um so basically what you do is you gather up some dice you roll them and you count the evens as as success uh but sixes count count more um, i think it's like double it's like two successes if you roll a six um and then you compare it against a target number or 
uh, whatever you're fighting against. So like a comparison. So system wise, very easy to pick up, um, which is I think a, a bonus when you're trying to get new people into a role playing game. Sitting down and doing making a champion's character uh, from scratch with someone who's never played role playing games or has never played champions. It can be difficult. Even DC Heroes was that way. Um, I remember the first campaign I went into, I already had the books. I already had my character created. and uh, My friend helped me uh, put my, my character together because he knew the rules a little bit better. He's like, oh, if you have this, this, and this. So he was like an auditor, you know? Like, like you, you have your, your tax account and auditor say, oh, you know, you could write this off, write this off, write this off. And you're like, oh, all of a sudden you got more money at the end of the year. But uh, that was the way with DC Heroes. With this, it, it's a lot easier. I mean, you do have points to spend okay but they lay it out very clearly if you want to do a street level like daredevil type campaigns or you want to do like justice league or avengers type campaigns here's here's your point level for that um and those are the type of characters that you get to make which is which is pretty cool um and the powers inside it has that's that's the next thing is it is it just going to be like a bland attack power um or defense power and you have to put points it's not like that at all they have a really wild list of powers um, in here. Some of the ones I've never seen before, but actually make sense. I didn't count them, but there's a whole bunch there. Can you see that huge list? Then look at that. Um, there's a ton in there, uh, like Stargates of Power. Instead of just using oh teleport with this, 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 they put it in there, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, what was some of the other ones? Uh, I don't know. They, they had one that kind of simulated um, like a magic hat or a bag of holding, uh, which was which was pretty cool. Like, you know, so you have room to take out this item that you needed just for this uh, just for this adventure. You know, your your anti shark repellent spray, whatever it is. But they've got they've got kind of rules for that. Uh, the levels make sense. They're very clear. You know, speed is laid out very clear. You know, if, if you've got 12 D, so 12 dice, and uh, like super speed, you can run 10,000 miles per hour. That's what I like. Um, it's laid out extremely clear. And the power gives you, you know, everything you can do with super speed. Like inside super speed, you can knock out X amount of minions um, just by, you know, utilizing your power. And the way to classify like regular street people, minions, foes, villains, uh, is a tier level, kind of like in the Star Wars role-playing game in Genesis, which I enjoy. It looks like some of the uh, aspects were of this game were borrowed from there, maybe not intentionally, maybe they just happen to have the same good idea, I don't know. But um, minions are just basically moves you can knock out really easily, but you still have to kind of fight them, so you know, it still takes up time, just like in the comic books and like ranges they do range bands like they did in star wars you know you're either you know kind of engaged or you're x amount or x amount far away you don't have to say oh he is you know 45 inches away which is five feet per per inch and then you have to do all that math in your head no no you just kind of say okay th this is how far away he is he's in that range band and i think that leaves more time for role playing and less time sitting there figuring out you know what's my bonus or minus to hit on this which i really like that adds to the cinematic and they they do something uh where you know if if you win the role you have control of the narrative okay uh if anybody ever saw uh, watched um uh critical role you know someone rolls a d20 he says how do you want to do this well you get to how you want to do this every time you win the role okay uh they use an example in here where uh, somebody wants to intimidate a guy, you know, using a giant robot. And um, so he makes the attack and he successfully intimidates him. So he describes, I burn a hole with my energy beam through the canopy, which freaks him out. Like all of a sudden I'm, I'm exposed, you know, I better get the heck out of here. So it gives, um, which is very comic booky, which I like. It, it gives a lot of options for that. Um, they have, it, it's interesting how they handle wealth. I'm not sure how that play out. You just buy, like, I want to be the wealthiest guy on the planet. Okay, you can buy that. Then all of a sudden, money's not an issue. To me, because if I was ever Batman, and, like, these criminals are trying to steal money, 
So why don't I just give them money and then nobody gets hurt, you know? <laughs> I know that would be kind of immoral or whatever <laughs> make for a lame comic book. But they're stealing money probably because they're poor, you know? I don't know. Or maybe they're just evil. Uh, but, um, you know, that's kind of like their motivation for a lot of villains is money, wealth. And it's like, well, here you go. Um, but I always find that very interesting. That's why I was like Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor had money, you know, but he wanted more. You know, he had all the money he wanted. Except in the movies where he just wanted real estate. He was like an evil real estate agent, which is kind of strange. But I still enjoy those old movies. Combat, very easy to uh, um, to resolve. As far as I can tell from, from reading it, um, they have uh, obviously a big section on equipment, um, vehicles, uh, everything that you can do uh, inside a comic book. They give you benchmarks in here. There's benchmarks for like, um, you know, how much stuff weighs, like a jumbo jet weighs 100 tons to 500 tons, um, which I think is very, uh, I think is necessary. Um, it, it scales very well. They've got a few things in here that you see in other role-playing games. Um, I think it's, they call it Edge, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's kind of like hero points or plot points, like from uh, Cypher. And depending on how powerful your character is, okay, if you're like really powerful, then you're not going to get very many uh, edge points to start out with. If you're less powerful, if you're playing in that campaign with everybody, but your character is not as powerful, you're going to get more to start off with. So that kind of makes a balance of why Superman can fight alongside Batman. Su Superman probably has no edge points but batman's probably got a ton so he's getting shit done so very clever i've seen it done in other uh role-playing games just not as well as done in prowlers and paragons um yeah, it says welcome back and apparently i missed it the first time around um but this is a, a a decent book i recommend getting it if you're a fan of superhero games or if you want to run a superhero game um it's more involved than icons um, less math than Mutants and Masterminds. A um, little bit less cinematic than Cortex Prime. But um, it's got that cinematic option in there. Done very well. Um, so when someone was telling me that this is... It's got a mix of both. I was like, alright, I gotta check it out. I wanna see how they balance that. And quite honestly... I didn't think they'd be able to do it, <laughs> but uh, reading through the book today, they are able to do it. So they've got excellent uh, examples of characters and villains, all with great artwork. I'm glad they didn't, they invested in the art because the art is fantastic. Um, well, look at that guy. He's pure out of the 90s. Can you see that? Look at that. So here are some of the... Uh, it's edge that's what i was thinking of i think i got that right but you have your abilities agility intellect might perception toughness willpower your talents which is your skills um, academics charm command covert investigation medicine professional science streetwise survival technology vehicles no reason why you can't add your own skill sets in there to fit your uh um your game so if you want to do a supers game in like medieval times or in uh, victorian times i mean everything can be adapted easily your powers your perks uh, which were you'd have like your contacts or your wealth um your flaws and gear they, they handle gear a little bit different like mundane gear you say okay you can have it okay it's not like you have to build your mon mundane I, I gotta build my uh my communicator i remember in dc heroes like building a walkie talkie t it took an insane amount of points or something like that uh, but you don't really have to worry about with that. It says, like, all that stuff that you, you shouldn't worry about. So really good balance. So this is uh, uh, Prowlers and Paragons. You can buy it, um, like, drive through RPG. Um, I recommend getting the uh, high-quality one because um, I, I don't know how, they, uh, how the lesser-quality ones turn out. But this one is, is fantastic. The... Uh, the layout of it is great. It's a lot like the layout's a lot like Mutants and Masterminds. In fact, if, if I hadn't known about this, someone just showed me the book really quick, and I was looking at like this page, I'd say, "Oh, I'm looking at a Mutants and Masterminds books." But now, that's not a bad thing. 
uh, because that's like one of the best laid out books out there. Um, so check it out. Prowlers and Paragons. I recommend it. It's good. I like it. What do you guys think? Uh, thanks for watching my video. Like and subscribe. All that kind of stuff. Press all the buttons you see below. Uh, sometimes I post stuff. Sometimes I don't. Uh, hope everybody is well and stay safe. Bye, everybody.